This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. Studios of WKTV. Let's go inside for Silent Voices. This year, this event had something special happen. We had children that came forward who were affected by CASA and Child Protective Services. And they said, you know what? We want to tell our story. Because if an adult can tell their story, why can't we tell ours? And so I told these children to come all the way from Texas. And when they came in from Texas, I saw how the family had been battered and hurt and so victimized that our system needs accountability. And the only way to get accountability is for their stories to be told. And so it is with great honor that this year I give each and every one of you, including all of you families back there who think Child Protective Services and our government is not affecting your family values or your family morals, these two brave children that we have named to be ambassadors for the reform of Child Protective Services and CASA.
brother and sister <laughs> got taken the night before I did. <laughs> we were forced to stay at the center <laughs> until like one in, in one in the morning. <laughs> And they told them, my little brother and sister that they were going to a sleepover. I haven't seen them in a year. And they are so dear to me. They put me through so much stress. They lied to me. They told me that I was going to get to see them. Did I get to see them? No, I didn't. <laughs> My brother cut his foot open and the cause of shelter that we were staying at put bets on how many stitches he was going to get in his foot. <laughs> away because he could not handle it. <laughs> I couldn't handle it. I was this close to running away. <laughs> Except I felt like I couldn't because I was scared. They made me feel scared. <laughs> I got to see my mom every Thursday for an hour over three months <laughs> she we this family our family was in the process of adopting these two kids who we've raised for three and a half years <laughs> they took them away from us and my caseworker told them that they weren't my brother and sister they were my cousins. I... I try not to cry about it, but it hurts so much. It makes me want to scream. It makes me want to go after all of these people and say, what kind of people are you? Why would you want to do this? If your kids got taken from you, what would you do to go through to save them? Hey, how you doing? My, my lawyer, I had asked her countless times to go to court to see what was going on with my case. What did she tell me? No. Oh, yeah, I'll tell the judge that you want to go. We'll see what he has to say. But I wouldn't recommend it because there's going to be bad things said about your family. She didn't act like she cared. Why would she not act like she cared if she was supposed to be helping the kids? Why did my caseworker do the same thing? When I was in my first placement, they forced religion, lied to me, told me that they didn't know when I knew that they know. They knew about my case and they did not want to tell me about it because they were afraid of how I would react, that I would run away, that they would stop getting a paycheck for me. I am not some cash cow that you can abduct from your parents just so you can live. I am a person. <laughs> I deserve so much more respect than they gave me. They basically took away my rights, told me that I could not do anything, man, I went through hell and back, 
and this is for L. My life got put into a blender. My whole entire family's lives got put into a blender. They put it on blend for three months for me and six months for this boy here. Now tell me, if I'm supposed to have rights in this country, then why do I feel like they were taken away from me the minute I got put in foster care? As I stand behind this building and look out to that monument, I want things to change! Amen. That's the only way I would have. I sat in that car while we drove through Dallas in the middle of the night to two different shelters. We finally found one 
that opened up. Otherwise, we would have had to slept in the CPS office building. They would have done that to us. I was up till four in the morning signing paperwork to give my life to another person, to another group of people who would not care. I woke up at eight o'clock in the morning. I was told, you gotta do some chores, man. Otherwise you can't live here. I told him, hey, Dude, I just got to sleep four hours ago. They didn't care. They wanted the work done. So we had to get up. We had to do the work. And for two months, I was forced to go to a church I did not believe in. I was forced to sicken myself with food that I had not touched for years. They didn't care if they poisoned you with what you ate. It doesn't matter. They get money. I, they got more money for me than they got for my sister. Because I have a problem. Or so they say. After two months, I could not take the way I was treated any longer. And I walked out of the building in which I was staying. I told them, goodbye, I'm gone. I got my sister's blessing so that I could leave. I made a promise that I would come back and I would get her out. And I, I tried. <laughs> I stayed on the streets for a week. I had to outrun a cop because I felt that my freedom from these abusers, these neglectors, was more important to me than letting them do what they wanted. I am not, as my sister so greatly put, a cash cow. I am not a paycheck in your pocket. So I got caught. And I got punished. I got put into juvenile holding. And told that after four days, if they didn't find me a place to stay, We'd try again next week. They didn't care that I slept on a mattress on a concrete slab. That I wore an orange jumpsuit and Velcro shoes. They didn't care. They made me a criminal. They made me something I am not. And so, I return to the system, hateful, regretful, because they removed me from my sister. Now that I left, it seems I had no right to see her. I got to see her one hour a day, one day a week, and that's it. They made me see my sister when I got to see my mother which was one hour a day, one day a week. Now you tell me, if you're shoved down to only being one hour a day and one day a week, when you've spent your entire life with this person, how would you feel? Tell me you'd feel hateful. Tell me you would want revenge. Well, this is my revenge. I will let my voice reach to the top of every building and across the nation so everyone knows what these people do. I had my foot cut open 
my arm bruised black from my wrist to my elbow. I had my ankle twisted to the point I could not walk. You know the only time I got taken to the hospital is when my foot was open and the bets were placed then on how many stitches I would get. I saw $10 go between these people. The fact that I got seven stitches in my foot. And while the stitches were being put in and the pain reliever being shoved into my foot, they laughed. They called me a wuss. And I told them, come here. Let me cut your foot up and shove a needle in it. How would you feel? It wasn't good. It wasn't fun. It was miserable, and they thought it a comedy. And for you, those people that are walking away and think that they don't have to listen to this, that this has nothing to do with them, you wait. You'll come to this group when your children are taken because your house is a little messy because there's a false accusation, ac accusation upon you from a six-year-old with an imagination. I ran away from my second home. There was a very lovely, beautiful woman there who would have called herself my mother had I not had one. She actually cared. She cried when I left, when I got lost, because I broke her heart. Now that is where these people should be. They should care when you disappear. They should think, oh my God, what have I done? But instead they go, oh, he's gone. We'll find him later. I spent six weeks on the street to prove to them they could not find me. They could not hold me. They could not do what they wanted to me because I would not allow it. I will never allow someone to use me or abuse me. I after six weeks had to turn myself in because I was starving. I couldn't go home. So I got put in another care facility until they could find me a foster parent. When I got moved to this foster parent's home he treated me with total disrespect. I used my yes sirs and my no sirs, my pleases and thank yous, and I got, I can do whatever I want, and you aren't gonna stop me because this is my house. Now, does that sound like a parent to you? I had the man threaten and tell me that if he wanted to, he could make me stay with him. He could make it where I could not go home. I was threatened on so many occasions by this man. And it wasn't his size, and it wasn't his attitude. It was what he said to me. What he thought was okay to say to me in front of a caseworker. He thought that since it was his home, he could treat me with total and utter disrespect. My parents respect me. My sister respects me. These people do not respect us. As a people, or as a child, as a parent, <laughs> the 
They turned me into a smoker. They pushed my nerves so hard I had to go to a drug to help myself from being so angry all the time. When I finally got home, I was scared to leave my home. Nothing should ever do that to you. Ever. They called my father a molester. He's nothing of the sort. He's a brave man. He's a veteran of the United States Army. And you know what they treated him with? As much respect as that foster parent treated me with. And to this day, a year, a whole year, to have a normal life, we have had to move. We have had to change so many things. And we've had to leave behind friends and family to, so that we could live without these people. And I tell you now that if my voice does not reach that monument across this park, if my voice does not reach that Washington Monument on the horizon, then I am not yelling loud enough because not enough people seem to listen. We are in danger and we need to change it. That is all I have. And this is what you will get. A warning and help. Because I tell you now, as you, do, as you stand there in disbelief of me, even if you were to lose your children, I would fight to get them back to your home. I will fight to get a stranger's children back to them where they belong. I will not sit there on a lawn listening to someone as if they were crazy. Thank you.